Welcome back, science fans. In my last video, we explored how missiles launched during a Korean nuclear conflict could penetrate South Korea's defense shield. And obviously, when nuclear warheads are detonated on major cities, the devastation will be complete, both for the country and its economy. Today, we're exploring the consequences far from the blast zone. What would a Korean war mean for the rest of the world and for you and me? This video depicts a plausible worst case scenario. But reality could unfold differently, with communities and nations coming together and avoiding the severe long-term consequences. Still, we have to consider the worst because South Korea has an outsized role in the technology sector. Many of the chips that make up the brains of your electronic devices come from there. Companies like Samsung and SK Hynix are global leaders in manufacturing these components and they're all based in South Korea and making these chips isn't easy. It involves complex high-tech factories that take years to build. A nuclear conflict would destroy these facilities, and once demolished, it would take years to rebuild and restore their operations. This would not only affect Korea, but the entire East Asian region, including Taiwan, China, and Japan. All of these countries are economically integrated. This integration feeds into a technology supply chain which would be in the crosshairs during an East Asian war. So let's imagine the world and your life after things go nuclear in Korea. Consider a typical morning a few weeks after the war. As you get ready for work, you think to yourself, that war is thousands of miles away. I'll be fine. That is until your trusty car gives out on the way to the office. A blown fuse, something simple, or so you thought. The mechanic sighs, apologetic. It's not the fuse itself, it's the control unit that needs replacing. Normally a quick fix, but now those chips are nowhere to be found. Not at this shop, not in nearby towns, nowhere. As you end the call, a tiny jolt of adrenaline races through your body as you realize this is more serious than you thought. Little do you know, but an electronic shortage has begun to ripple across the country, affecting critical components. At first, items like microcontrollers become scarce. Then, semiconductors, which are the brains behind iPhones, LED TVs, and most other consumer electronics, start to disappear. You begin to hear chatter that others aren't able to find the things they need, either. Social media is abuzz with stories of shortages, from everyday essentials to specialized equipment. But for you, this is just about your car, right? It should be all okay once you pick up a rental. But at the counter, you find out it costs too much now because surging demand. So how do you get to work? Maybe you can take public transport? But you find it's overflowing with people who are in similar situations. Plus, the routes become unreliable because the buses are also impacted by supply problems like everything else. Now, since you can't get to work consistently, your boss starts to reduce your pay. This car breakdown suddenly puts your income and career path at risk. A car breaking down shouldn't feel like a life-altering event, but when the world's supply chains are shattered, that simple car problem will last for a long, long time. But it gets worse. Next week is your son's birthday. Like most teenagers, he loves video games and has spent months waiting for the newest Zelda game. You try to buy it, but search after search, website after website. It's like the game never existed. No stores have it in stock. And what about the holidays coming up? The electronics and technology we've come to expect are suddenly missing. When will we get our normal life back? Let's consider what happens over the next five years. Imagine a small farmer in the middle of the US. You might think he doesn't use technology, but this is the 21st century. Of course he does. He uses smart irrigation systems to conserve water and GPS-guided machinery to efficiently harvest his crops. Over the last year, spare parts have become hard to find and software updates for the GPS have become erratic. A year ago, the farmer had abundant crops and the main obstacle to more produce was the weather. But now spare parts for the tractors are scarce, which leads to fewer of them on the fields and smaller harvests. Farming has regressed by a few decades because technologies like smart irrigation, GPS-guided vehicles, and precision fertilization have become inconsistent. Without these key innovations, the food supply will be reduced. This not only impacts their livelihood, but also reduces the local food supply. As you can see, technological threads weave through our daily lives. Whether on a farm, 
or city, technology has rooted itself into every corner of modern life. By the end of the first year, the crisis has touched nearly every aspect of our lives. Three years later, electronics production slowly starts to come back since companies have moved to other parts of the world. But life has not returned to normal. Electronics are now luxury goods and the latest tech is reserved for an elite few. Most people will have a lingering worry in the back of their mind. What if their water heater breaks? Or their car's navigation system goes dark? Anything that involves a complex electronic part is nowhere to be found. Every time an appliance sputters or your phone glitches, you brace for a problem that can't be fixed. What used to be simple repairs on refrigerators, ovens and washers and dryers are now hard problems to solve. Since South Korea plays a key role in the global semiconductor industry, a nuclear war will affect the production of a wide range of electronic goods. Companies that relied on advanced tech have collapsed. Millions of people are out of work and the economy has entered a depression. Outside of work, people will have turned to simpler ways to pass the time. You may dig up the old Monopoly board game or play a lot more cards than you have in the past. Five years in, the chip shortage reshapes how we learn, work, and even how we improve as a civilization. The amazing devices we were able to build just five years ago now seem like alien artifacts, visible, but beyond our capacity to recreate. Society has slipped backwards. Many schools have transitioned from electronic whiteboards to old-fashioned blackboards. Outdated equipment becomes the norm. Many jobs now focus on fixing what's left instead of building new gadgets. Why won't companies be able to adapt? The simple answer are those destroyed factories. But there's more than that. Product expertise and highly specialized skills and knowledge bases will take many years to rebuild. Innovation would stall as companies can't find the components they need to create the next generation of products. The technological revolution that began in the 20th century and spoiled us with exponential improvements every few years will end. You're thinking, this is really bleak. Can things really go that bad? Unfortunately, yes, they could. A full-fledged nuclear war in Korea would absolutely ensure a lost decade for technology. Constructing state-of-the-art semiconductor fabs is not as straightforward as launching a new coffee shop when the old one closes. Furthermore, the products that are made in these factories are incredibly complex. Did you know those tiny chips are made up of thousands of parts and special materials? These materials include rare earth metals, ultra-pure silicon, complex computer algorithms, the list goes on and on. Some take over five years to get from the initial design to where they're inside your phone. If this intricate network collapses, we lose more than those gadgets. We lose the infrastructure to go from one generation of technology to the next. In summary, we've grown so comfortable with our tech-filled lives that those supply chains and the work behind them have faded into the background. A nuclear war in Korea forces these hidden systems into the spotlight and shows us how precarious our modern comforts can be. Maybe next time you pick up your phone, you'll pause remembering all it took to put that into your hands and how swiftly it could all vanish. Thank you for watching. If you're still there, please like and subscribe. Until the next time...